Right, let's get C.C. Freeman in here. All right, C.C. Freeman. What's up, Hey, beloved? man, how are you? Hey, beloved, I'm how good. are you? I'm good. Just a quick suggestion to clear you up. I hear you're over there congested. Have you tried Slippery yeah. Elm? Um, no. You might want to try that. It's really, really good. Is it a tea? It's a, um, you know, it's a herb that you, you know, put in tea. Okay. Yeah, because you know, I was having it. all those issues from COVID. But yeah. uh, let me hit on a few points. What you were saying about Derek Chauvin, there was a space, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, some guy, I don't remember his name, white guy, crypto something. Every time we came in the room, he was like, oh, FBA's in here. So he only let white people speak. But they were in that space, the white people, the oppressive class were in there saying that Derek Chauvin should have had better protection. And that was kind of mind blowing to me because it's telling how they believe that this outright murderous criminal, a thug in blue, deserves special treatment in prison. Like how's he, yeah. yeah, how's he supposed to have special treatment? So like you said, if you don't commit the crime, you won't do the time. But what I've been noticing that's really telling is that they raise hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions for, for these killer cops. You remember Michael Slager? that shot Walter mm -hmm. Scott in the back and then planted the taser. Oh, yeah. They raised millions yeah. for him. Kyle Rittenhouse, even though he's not a cop, he's a wannabe cop. And then Derek mm -hmm. Chauvin. So I've been looking at X lately as allowing people to use the N word on the app openly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. watching the vitriol, it's gone like it's astronomical. I now see that these people the oppressive class are so villainous, they would welcome slavery back. That's my opinion. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's the point I wanted to make. And then to the, hey. huh? Go ahead. Uh, Go and ahead. then to the Habesha guy that came up. Um, I like when they come up and say those dumb things because it's a great testament to the loving and embracing spirit that Black American freedmen have, that a lot of us are still thinking that you know, the melanated immigrants, immigrants like Caribbeans, Africans, Afro Latinos are black. That goes to show you that it's all a lie that we've never embraced them. But right. yeah, but but to as you say, beloved Habesha, just know we're about to end all that since you all don't know how to act and can't end your tribalism. But I'm gonna close with this last thing. I put it in the um I should put it in the jumbotron. I put it in the comment, the, you know, the, you know, the comments below. Did you know that Biden is giving reparations to um, Mexicans? Yeah, I, I, I said that. Oh, earlier. I didn't hear I'm that. Like, yeah, 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 I said that. Oh. Yeah, they did for some reparations for Mexicans. I'm like, what the hell? So that's why I said we got to watch when they say reparations. We got to read the fine print. Yeah, man. but this came, let me read this one sentence from whitehouse.gov. And it says, um, well, let me read two sentences. Together, we're taking a balanced approach that lies at the heart of the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. And we and 19 other nations have signed on to that agreement. So it includes enforcing our borders, increasing reparations, and opening a historic number of legal pathways for migrants. I just wanna close with that. This is frightening. Yes, indeed. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. See, that's why, yeah, the disrespect of the Democrats, man, we got to, they have to be checked on that. But um, the sister said something very interesting too, how they raise so much money for these white supremacist killers and murderers. See, they've been like that ever since slavery. We brought up slavery. When, when notice when you talk about slavery, the dominant society, and we start talking about reparations, we always hear, well, I didn't own any slaves. I didn't have anything to do with none of that. Let me tell you something. The dominant white society were some of the main people helping to enforce slavery and anti-black racism during formal slavery. And they didn't really get any type of, at the moment, um, direct economic benefit from it. They got more of a psychological benefit. And they, they also did get an economic benefit because the whole economy was based on slave labor. Let's be very clear. So even if they didn't own a slave, you worked in a factory where the slave produced resources were being refined 
But even the everyday poor white person, they were the ones in the militia groups, you know, volunteering to go round up black folks. You understand? They were the ones basically during doing surveillance on black people all the time, helping to maintain those laws. They didn't own any um, black people, but they were the main ones doing surveillance, doing intel. Whenever a black person ran away from a plantation, white folks were lining up to, to go find them in droves. Don't let them act like they didn't have nothing to do with it. They did. When the lynchings would go down, go look at some of them lynching pictures. They would show up by the thousands, cheering, fighting over which body part to get. And they were always complicit in the anti-black racism. And then act like, well, I didn't, I didn't own nobody. I didn't, I didn't string nobody up in a tree. But you stood there and watched and cheered. During slavery, you stood there um, supporting the system, helping to, to locate runaway black people. And even now, when black people are harmed by race soldiers or wannabe race soldiers, they throw their little ducats in there to support them. You know, they, they try to act like their hands are clean. Uh, well, you should be mad at the police. No, I'm looking at you. You're the one supporting the written houses and the Zimmermans and all of these other people. Y'all sit up there and give these people millions of dollars in GoFundMe money. So it's supported by people who get a psychological benefit from seeing a white person do something oppressive to a black person. So they're all complicit in it. Yeah. Let me see. Um, let me, so let's get Brother Terrain in here. What's up, Brother Terrain? Brother Terrain. How are you doing this evening? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'll be better, man, when this food wears off. I've been dragging for the past three days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Oh, uh, I wanted to throw one thing out there and make another point. Um, yeah. The situation with Derek Chauvin, um, I don't, you know, I'm sorry it happened that it wasn't finished, but I'll leave that alone. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but um, I feel like that might be some internal prison politics that's going on because I guarantee you, that dude is either being protected by the guards or by the Aryans um, gangs in there one way or the other. So, yeah. And so something, something about that is off. Cause I guarantee he's looked at as a hero in there on that. So that needs to be more investigated. The second thing I wanted to ask or throw out there is the um, politically, man, the Biden administration is in serious trouble with the black voters. And I know they are because I've seen more and more, like more vicious attacks and more condescending attacks from a lot of the shills that are in the bag for Biden Harris. Now, I don't want to get into a conversation about who people want to vote for, but I've noticed that over the past couple of years, it was basically, you know, it was either stripping or get your booty to the polls or just shut up black man and just go vote because you're holding us back. But now I'm seeing this campaign of just straight up condescension, like you're too stupid to understand how the process works. And if you're upset with the administration and them funding Ukraine and Israel, and just shut up anyway and don't ask no questions and just go ahead and go vote. So I personally think that's going to be, I think the Dems are going to be in for a very rude awakening by the fact that they're the issues that are important to their base. They're not pretend to pay attention to, and they're being disrespectful to them about it. Cause you know, to the point where even Jamal Bowman is saying that the fact that we're not talking about reparations is going to hurt us in 2024 and people are disregarding that. So I'd love to get your take on what you think the political landscape is going to look like in 2024 in our land. Thank you, brother. Good question, man. And, and again, I've seen some of these videos and they're doing the same play with these Democratic shields. And, and Democrats, I hope y'all are listening. Y'all people at the DNC, listen, we can smell your Democratic ops from a mile a damn way at this point because y'all have a, 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 a prototype that you use. If there's always a little bed winchy vibe, it's always a tether. There's a tether bed winchy vibe. Uh, and like my man Terrain said, it's always a condescending tone. Um, they come out here, they start acting like black voters are dumb and we're too dumb to see that the Republicans are going to get us. 
they use the whole same, the same playbook. The, the sky is falling. If you let the Republicans get in office, the sky is going to fall. Everything, we're going to be back in slavery if you let the Republicans get back in office. The scare tactics that they try to use, they don't understand them shits don't work. All the hell that we've been receiving has been under the damn Democrats. You can't scare us with the Republican thing that the Republicans are going to get us. That y'all tried that and it didn't work. And I've said this before, when, when Trump was in office, and I'm no fan of the, the Republicans, but Trump didn't really put any overtly anti-black policies out there. None. Trump didn't put any anti-black policies out there. But the damn Democrats, man, we were getting locked up left and right for anti-Asian hate crimes. We were being targeted for that nonsense. The Democrats are throwing all of these illegal immigrants into black neighborhoods. The black communities all over the country are begging for help. Like, hey, 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 Democrats, what are you doing? Y'all dumping these people into our neighborhoods. We don't know these people. They're using our facilities. We got to kick our kids out of sports facilities because y'all bringing in illegal immigrants. Y'all housing these people using our tax dollars. Some of these people are criminals. They had one dude from South America who was a damn uh, a murderer that got out of jail and came up here. I just saw a story about that guy from down there in South America. They didn't put him in a damn black community. So the black community is like, hey, man, what the hell? Y'all can't scare us with nothing that the Republicans are going to do. What are they going to do that you ain't doing? You dig? Y'all better cough up that bread that you owe us. We got to get that reparations thing happening. And bringing your disrespectful Democratic shills out here to try to shame us to try to talk like they're some kind of intellectual superiors, which they're not, especially with their tethers. That's another thing that I don't like. When y'all get y'all Democratic shills who are tethers, who are lucky to be over here and should be thanking us for helping them get over here, want to come and point their finger about how we're not smart enough to see the finesse that the Republicans are going to run on us. And no disrespect, I don't want no, I don't take political advice from tethers. You understand? If you couldn't fix your own homeland, if people are pissing and chitting in the streets in your homeland, you can't say nothing to me. I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. You're not going to be condescending to me. And people over there in your homeland wiping their ass with leaves. You can't say nothing to me. No disrespect. I don't take any condescension from Democratic shield tethers. You understand? We're just not playing that game with them no more. So they're going to have to do what we're telling them to do. Break bread. Give us what's owed. Y'all give everybody else things that are not even owed to them. If they're aggrieved in any shape, way, form, or fashion, y'all write checks for them. Y'all need to start getting that popping for us. We don't give a damn if the white supremacists don't like it. They don't like anything we do anyway. We're past that like shit. We're talking about what's due. We ain't trying to sit around and hold hands and kick cans and sing Kumbaya no more. Black folks are finally getting a backbone and we're letting all, y'all know what the business is. All right. But let me get up out of here, man. I'm about to go get some of that, some of the herbs from somewhere. And um, y'all be good, man. I'll be um, on live tomorrow on my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. Y'all go to Tariq Radio and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll chop it up with you guys tomorrow. Peace.